morning. Um, want to thank you again for turning up. I know you have more newsworthy stuff than this to do. So thank you for turning up. Um, just wanted to take a moment to express my appreciation to many members of the media who inquired about my health um, a couple of weeks ago. I truly appreciate it. Um, didn't have to do it and you did it. So I, I, I'm very grateful for that. Um, <clears throat> this is the end of a quarter. We're talking about the uh, government numbers as at December. So it's the end of a quarter and we are therefore measuring against the IMF targets. Pleased to say that the that Jamaica has surpassed the IMF target for the primary balance. They had a primary balance of 66 billion and the target was 60.7 billion. They also surpassed the net international reserves. They have reserves of 2.44 US 2.44 billion and the target was US 1.64. So all other things being equal, I expect that uh, we will pass the 11th review by the IMF. The IMF team was scheduled to be here, I believe last week, um, but with the pending general elections, they have elected to come after elections and when a new government is installed regardless of which party forms that new government. So we expect to see them here, uh, I guess, in a couple of weeks' time uh, in March. Um, the <clears throat> looking at the revenues of the country, remember revenues are made up of taxes and grants. And on the tax side, the news continues to be pretty good. Um, 6.6 .6 billion ahead of target. Um, and the major taxes that are contributing to this favorable performance is tax on interest, which is up four and a half billion over target. SCT, which is up 2.4 billion. Company tax, 1.7, and GCT, 1.5. The taxes that are underperforming is telephone call tax, customs duty, both of which are 0.9 billion below target, and tax on dividends, which is 0.6 below target. The grants remain way below target. The grants are 3.2 billion <coughs> below. Um, and so a continuing shortfall in revenue from grants. On the expenditure side, uh, <coughs> Three and a half billion has been underspent. That is, they have not spent as much as budgeted by the amount of three and a half billion. Contributing to that underspend is uh, interest, which is five billion below what was budgeted. Wages and salaries is 2.3 billion above the budget. And recall that is because of the wage settlement that turned out to be higher than what was budgeted and planned. Um, so that's 2.3 billion above. CapEx, capital expenditure, has finally almost caught up with the budget, just a sh bit shy of the budget. And in essence, that is because the IMF reduction of the primary surplus from seven and a half to seven and a quarter has opened up some room for the expenditure, capital expenditure to um, hit the budget. So we're pleased to see that we are spending in that area at least. A couple interesting pieces of economic data came out of the various um, government agencies. Statin, Statistical Institute of Jamaica, published the employment uh, data for the month of October. So for October, 2015 versus October 2014, unemployment is down to 13.5% from 14.2. So there's been an increase in employment by 0.7. Or if you want to look up on it the other way, there's been a reduction in unemployment by 0.7. Inflation for January uh, came out at minus 0.4%. 
and the major contributing components to that is electricity and fuel, which was down 1.4%, and vegetables and starchy food, which was down 3.4%, and really reflects the rebound of agriculture from last year's very severe drought. We had a couple of showers uh, in the last couple of weeks and months, and that has certainly helped considerably. The other piece of economic information statin released had to do with the merchandise trade deficit, which at October um, had been reduced by $500 million. So October 2015 uh, versus October, I apologize, from January to October 2015, compared to last year, same time, the merchandise trade deficit is down by 500 million US dollars or half a billion US dollars, okay? Jamaica Tourist Board released information on um, tourist arrivals, visitor arrivals. Between January and December of last year, the stopovers increased by 2.1% and cruise ship passengers was up by 10.2%. I'm looking for tourism to do very well in 2016. Uh, many more rooms are in the market compared to last year, and that's an important component in increasing the uh, ability to receive more visitors. That and, of course, lift capacity, that is um, airlines flying into Jamaica. Um, so I'm very hopeful about that business going forward. I think everybody knows that Fitch, the rating agency, upgraded Jamaica from B minus to B. Uh, and that follows on Standard and Poor upgrading Jamaica in June of last year, similarly from B minus to B. So the two major rating agencies have now upgraded Jamaica to a B. Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, you know they do every quarter this <coughs> Consumer and Business Confidence Index. And the Business Confidence Index rose to 123 from 110.6. So at December, it was 123, up from September when it was 110.6. Consumer Confidence Index rose even more. Uh, at September, it was 103.9 and at December, 124.4%. And I believe <clears throat> I mentioned in previous briefings that I was picking up in the business community that the last quarter of last year, there was a lot more buoyancy in the economy. Businesses found that they were selling more, uh, consumers were buying more. And <clears throat> I think in part that had to do with uh, lower oil prices which percolated through to low electricity rates. Perhaps the uh, back pay for the negotiated wage settlement with civil servants. Um, so those two things combined to see uh, Jamaica have a good um, November, December for sure, and maybe even October wasn't so bad. Um, <clears throat> so I'm hoping that that carries over into uh, this quarter this year, January to March, but we don't have any numbers on that yet, we can't say. <clears throat> Bank of Jamaica released some information on remittances, and so for October of this year, remitting, remittances are up 11 million US, um, or 7%. Um, and of course, remittances is a vital source of foreign exchange uh, for Jamaica. And if you combine that too with what we just spoke about, that the uh, um, buoyancy in the last quarter in the economy, maybe even remittances uh, contributed to that. Between January and October of last year, remittances uh, rose by 62.6 million US dollars. So that category seems to be doing very well. Let me conclude with uh, just a few remarks. First of all, I expect that we will pass the 11th review by the IMF. Um, 
because we have met the NIR on the primary balance target, surpassed them, I should say. And <clears throat> unless there is uh, something that is unforeseen, I expect that we will um, pass that test. I'd say too that I am heartened that uh, the other macroeconomic variables are pointing <clears throat> in the right direction. Inflation low, January minus four, sorry, minus 0.4. Trade balance improving, employment notching up a little bit, tourism showing growth of over 2%, good prospects in 2016, and GDP growth. Uh, we don't have the latest numbers, but uh, 0.4, sorry, 0.3, I believe, in first quarter last year. 0.6, 1.5, I expect that the quarter, October to December, should come through pretty strongly also. Nonetheless, despite this uh, good trend, the last quarter, January to March, is a tough quarter for the fiscal targets. We have to move from approximately 60 billion of primary surplus to 120 billion of primary surplus at March. So in one quarter, we have to do what we have done in three quarters. It's a very steep climb. <clears throat> it so happens that that's how government revenues are skewed, particularly uh, taxes, taxes from companies and taxes from individuals. So let's just hope that uh, we do achieve that 60 billion increase in the primary balance. That's it, ladies and gents, we'd love to take some questions from you.